Hello students, I am back again and in this session we will discuss about how to balance a chemical equation. As we have discussed earlier that there are two types of chemical equation, unbalanced chemical equation and balanced chemical equation and we have to make a balanced chemical equation by a method which is called heat and trial method. <clears throat> so this chemical uh, the, uh, balancing a chemical equation can be done by the method which is called heat and trial method and also sometimes it is known as trial and error method both are same so we'll discuss this method how can we make a balance a chemical equation so we'll take an example uh, that example that magnesium Mg plus O2 give rise to MgO magnesium oxide. So this is a very simple chemical equation but it is unbalanced that is skeletal chemical equation. H you know that in unbalanced chemical equation the number of atoms of each element in the reactant side and product side are not same. So if you count here that magnesium atom here is only one whereas the oxygen atom in reactant side is two so whenever O2 means two oxygen atom this is a molecule which consists of two oxygen atoms so you have to count the number of atoms so oxygen atom two magnesium one whereas if you see the right side that is product side you will find the magnesium atom is 1 and oxygen atom is 1 so here the difference is that although magnesium atom is same in both side but oxygen atom is not same in both side so in case of product side oxygen is 1 <coughs> and in reactant side it is 2 so what you have to do you have to make the same number of oxygen atom here so how can you do it you will do by multiplying a number so if you want to make oxygen atom 2 so I will multiply 2 here so whenever you multiply 2 then it becomes 2 so then it will be equal so what you have to do if you multiply 2 here in oxygen atom then it becomes 2 so what you have to do again in the equation you have to multiply the number to the oxygen atom but here you can see MgO it is a compound here magnesium and oxygen are not two different atom here it is a molecule consist of magnesium and oxygen so both are present in a same compound so if you multiply two so you have to multiply two in the left hand side of the compound not in between not right side remember students whenever you will multiply any number you have to multiply the number to the left side of the whole compound or element whether it is a reactant side or product side it is not important but if you want to make equal number of atoms you have to only multiply the number and you have to multiply the number to the left side of the compound or element so here i have to multiply 2 in the left hand side of mgo so now 2 is multiplied with o so it becomes 2 but what happens you see students when you multiply 2 here the 2 is multiplied to mg also and o also so that what happens here that magnesium atom becomes also 2 so previously it was 1 but here it becomes 2 so here now the magnesium atoms become 2 in the product side so again what you have to do you have to make the same number of magnesium atom in the reactant side so what you have to do again you have to make it 2 so if you make it 2 what you have to do you have to multiply 2 here so if you multiply 2 then you have to also multiply 2 in the equation again remember you have to multiply 
to the left side of the element or compound not right side not in between so here magnesium becomes 2 so if you compare now in magnesium here 2 here also magnesium 2 here oxygen atom 2 here also oxygen atom 2 so now this equation can be called as balanced chemical equation so this method is called heat and dry method you have to multiply the number and till you have to multiply until the number of atoms of both sides will be equal. So, we will take another example. So, this is the first example. Example number 2 that is for example Fe iron when reacts with water it forms uh, Fe2O3 plus hydrogen gas. So, students, whenever you will find the reaction, if you want to multiply, then first you have to find out the number of atoms of each element in the reactant side as well as product side. So, what I will do here. I will count the number of atoms here. So iron Fe number is 1 here. Then hydrogen you have to write, you have to count how many? 2 atoms are there. Then oxygen here 1 is there. Okay. If you will go to the product side or right hand side, then you will find Fe is 2. Here Hydrogen, if you will compare, because you have written here hydrogen here, it is 2 and if you write oxygen here, it becomes 3. So, clearly you can see the number of atoms in right hand side and, sorry, left hand side and right hand side are not equal. So, you have to make it equal. Then, you can take any one, but think about it. If I will take here first Fe, Fe is 1 here in the left hand side and 2 in right hand side. So what I have to do, I have to multiply 2 here. So if you multiply then you have to again write 2 in the left side of the Fe. So Fe becomes 2, okay. Then come to hydrogen, hydrogen already become 2. So then we will go to Oxygen. Oxygen is 1 here and oxygen is 3 here. So what I have to do? I have to make it 3. So if you want to make it 3, you have to multiply 3 here. So when you will multiply 3, then you have to also write 3 or multiply 3, the whole H2O. Again I am repeating, whenever you will multiply, you have to write the number in the left hand side of the compound. So when you are multiplying 3 in the left hand side of H2O, O becomes 3, no doubt. But now, the number of hydrogen atom changes. So, you will find that if 3 is multiplied with H2, so 3 into 2, 6 number of hydrogen atom becomes in the right hand, as a left hand side, that is reactant hand side. So, now, the hydrogen in the left hand side becomes 6, 3 into 2. So, what you have to do? Again, you have to make hydrogen here 6. So what you have to do, you have to multiply 3 here, already 2 is there, you will not change the 2, you have to only multiply the number, so you have to multiply 3 in the hydrogen molecule. So if you will multiply 3 here, 3 into 2, it becomes 6. So now you see, if you compare Fe, here 2, here also 2, if you if will compare hydrogen, 3 into 2, 6, here also 3 into 2, 6. Oxygen 3 into 1, that is 3 number of oxygen atom, here also 3. So now it becomes a balanced chemical equation. So this type of things you will find and we will take another example that whenever it is given 
another example number 3 you will take that uh, n 2 nitrogen when react with hydrogen it becomes nh3 you know this is called ammonia so it is a unbalanced chemical equation and you will make it balance so same type you can write here n is 1 n is 2 here hydrogen is also 2 but here n is 1 and h is 3 so what you have to do here if you compare first you will make n so here already 2 n is there and here 1 so what you have to do you have to multiply 2 here so you have to multiply 2 in the whole nh3 so whenever you will multiply 2 to the nitrogen atom 2 also multiply to the hydrogen atom so now the hydrogen atom becomes here 6 so in order to make 6 in the left hand side because hydrogen is 2 here you have to make it 6 so you have to multiply 3 so you have to write 3 in the left hand side of the hydrogen so now it becomes balanced chemical equation because all the number of atoms of each element in the reactant side and product side are equal then whenever you will write the balanced chemical equation sometimes in a balanced chemical equation we have to mention the state of the reactants and products to it means to in a complete balanced chemical equation two things is needed complete balanced chemical equation two things are necessary one is it should be balanced and another thing is the states of reactants and products are mentioned in the chemical equation and second thing sometimes the conditions of the conditions of chemical equation is also chemical reaction is also mentioned in the equation I will take an example that you know that photosynthesis which takes place in green plants the overall chemical equation of photosynthesis is carbon dioxide when react with water it forms glucose that is C6H12O6 plus oxygen is released also water is released so if you see this chemical equation it is an unbalanced chemical equation to make it balanced you have to 6 CO2 then 12 water then it becomes 6 and 6 so this is now a complete sorry it is a balanced chemical equation but what we need to complete a balanced chemical equation you have to mention the state of each element or compound present in reactant and product side so 6O2 normally it is in aqueous form the H2O is in liquid form it is aqueous form and also the hydrogen gas is in aqueous form and it is liquid form so this is a complete chemical balanced chemical equation a first one the mention of each reactant and each product the state of aq means aqueous l means liquid and second thing is that 
the condition of chemical equation this reaction will take place only in presence of sunlight so the conditions of the chemical reaction is written on the arrow mark sunlight and also you know that chlorophyll is needed so if these two things is not present are not present then this reaction will not take place so that's why the states of the reactants are mentioned below the reactant and product and conditions of the chemical reaction is written above and below the arrow mark so this is the proper way of writing a complete balanced chemical equation so the states uh, normally we write in a chemical equation if it is solid then we symbolize it s if it is liquid then we symbolize it l if it is gas it is symbolized as g and if it is aqueous solution means if it is in dissolved form then it is called a q and sometimes another symbol is used that is called ppt small ppt that is precipitate means if the product becomes insoluble then we have to write ppt here for example i will write another example that is na2so4 aqueous plus bacl2 aqueous these are in dissolved form when they react with each other then it form baso4 plus 2 nacl and the baso4 is ppt this is not soluble in water hence it is ppt you can write also solid here the solid the insoluble solid present in the product side can be called as precipitate and nacl becomes aqueous so these are the different ways or oh sorry different uh, states of reactants and product which should be mentioned in a chemical balanced chemical equation so this is all about the different uh, uh, the method by which we can balance a chemical equation and to make it complete these things should be written in the chemical equation and uh, this is all about for this session thank you very much